Hi, everybody. This is a wee bit of alchemy. I'm Rick Barrett. Welcome. So last week, we were talking about how to do a, a simple gin. And we explored the, uh, the specific movements of it. And uh, we we're going to take that a little deeper. We're going to kind of re 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 recreate some of what we did last week, but also take it, take it deeper. And um, we want to, uh, before that, I'd like to talk a little bit about what makes it a gin, because um, the, that's where the alchemy is. So let's, let's say we're, we're doing the movement we did last week. So I'm, I'm doing a very simple thing where I'm just moving my hand and I'm, I'm coming like this or I'm coming like this. Okay, two very simple motions. And as I'm doing them right now, that's a mechanical action. You know, it's, it's, it's strictly a, a muscular movement. You know, if I go like this, it's also one. And as such, it's not very powerful. It doesn't get the job done, doesn't, doesn't provide any magic. There's no alchemy there. But if I make it a gin, we have, this or this and they look very similar because they kind of are the the physical motion is pretty much the same but something happens internally that transforms that from a pretty weak ineffectual arm movement to something which has a lot of internal power. And I'd like to, to talk a little bit about that because that's uh, it gets down to uh, a topic which goes much, much broader than whether or not you can use it to punch somebody in the face or something. It's a something, it actually relates to how we live our lives, how, how much we are present for the event. And so um, how do we get to, first of all, be able to do it as if it's for the first time? To whenever I, I make this motion, I want to do it as though I've never done it before. And there's, there's a quality to that, that I'm going to get into because it has a broad implications for a lot of other stuff, but it's um, the key to what makes it a gin. So just to go back, a gin is where we direct our energy using consciousness or the mind to direct the energy and express it through the body. And it's contrasted in, in the literature with Li, L-I, which is crude muscular force. And in Taiji Chuan Through the Western Gate, I talked about it and I, I drew it, one chapter was, you know, power versus force was the, uh, was the idea. And that is that drawing a distinction and using two terms which are relatively similar in our language yet they have different connotations. And as such, they, uh, they evoke different feelings for us in, in, in terms of, of what we're doing in Tai Chi. So in the way I'm using it, power, and a lot of people have a kind of a, uh, uh, a reaction against power and force in terms of the words themselves, they bring up bad connotations, but in its simplest meaning, all power means is the quality or ability to do something. That's it. It's just like, are you capable of doing something? The power to go to sleep, the power to eat my breakfast, the power to, to stand up, you know. So all these things regard, you know, the having the quality or ability to be able to actually make something happen. 
force has an implication of being a bit more mechanical, using muscular strength to get something done. So it's, um, uh, but it doesn't have to be muscular strength. You know, force can be a, come in a lot of different ways. But we're still talking about the effect of energy on stuff, and they're they're similar, but they're kind of like the insubstantial and substantial aspects of the same thing. So in the sense that I used it in Western Gate, it was that the power is more related to internal power or the potential to do things. And force is the effect of using crude muscular uh, strength to make something happen. And so we have that, you know, the, the more um, uh, classic way of describing it is Jin, J-I-N versus Li, L-I. The internal power versus the uh, external force. And for a long time, many years, you know, I would read this stuff trying to, you know, get, get beyond the, the simplest uh, parts of my Taiji practice and, and, and studies. And, and there's no one around who actually could explain or even demonstrate what a jinn was. And that was until I actually um, encountered uh, uh, Wayson Liao in, in, in Chicago. And, uh, and he had written a book called um, uh, Taiji Tran Classics. And, and he talked about different kinds of jinns in it. And I said, oh, great. That's Talked to this guy, went there, and he actually gave me a demonstration. I wrote about that in Western Gate uh, also, and uh, how with a very light touch, he was able to create a huge effect. And I said, okay, all right, so I, I have a marker here. I've got something that I can say, yes, this is definitely not physical muscular force that, that, that just happened here. This is, this is something that's really extraordinary. So um, that caused me to, to start researching and try to be able to define it in terms that would be more recognizable to the Western mind. And one that didn't require, you know, 50 years of study and, and whatnot to uh, be able to get to. Because you can go to a Taiji class and just follow your teacher and do your form and da, da, da. And you can do that for decades and never actually in be able to get have a clue about what Jin is, and very likely they're not even going to talk about it. So, uh, uh, but if it is something that is important, as it is, as I consider it to be, because it is really the essence of what makes Taiji Tran tick, then I need to break that down and see exactly how to put it together and how to be able to make even a simple motion, like in, in this case, like being able to do that and make turn that simple arm movement into a jin. And so what are the components that um, we need to make that happen? So we need energy, okay? What is energy? Energy or chi is defined by its relationship. In other words, how, how stuff reacts against other stuff or how stuff is related to other stuff. So we talked about, let's say the energy is electricity. Okay, how, does, how do we know that there's electricity in my toaster? Well, I put a piece of bread in there, I push down the handle and after a couple of minutes, it comes out browner than it went in. So I know that something happened there and it's plugged into the walls, into the socket. So I say, okay, electricity did it. It did something there, which I, you know, we can explain, you know, with, uh, you know, uh, going deeper into it, but it still is the effect of the energy. We notice the energy by its effect on stuff. It defines the relationship to stuff. So, we get we need energy to make uh, to make the jin. We need it directed by consciousness or awareness. We need to be able to to so it's not just energy, something that just happens. You know, there are 
people who say, no, no, you just kind of get into the, you know, into the Taiji posture and God does it for you or nature does it or something. It's like, no, no, you do it. If you don't do it, it ain't happening. And so it requires that, that intention to actually make something happen. It requires the ability to hold things, hold poles in opposition, hold stuff to be able to say, this stuff is not that stuff and the two relating together, that's, that's the chi between them. So we get that, but we need to direct it through the body to actually make it work. And so one of the things I wanted to do with the, the exploration of Jin was to break it down so that we could take anything and make it into a jinn. Because the way it's classically taught is you have these specific movements, you have your ward off, which gives you the pong jin. Well, pong jin can be found in any movement. Pong jin is an expanding up and out kind of yang energy. You can and should be able to find that in any posture in any movement. And if we think about it as, oh, if I copy these movements, then I will get the magic. No, you're not going to get the magic. It's what what is inside it. And that takes us to the real alchemy in this. Because you can repeat the formula ah, of energy directed by consciousness, expressed through the body and still not have gin because there's there's a missing ingredient there and that is meeting meeting i talk about this a lot in uh, finding you in a world of it but meeting is where i encounter i participate in life in the present moment and there are three components to to meeting. One is you need to be in a state of wholeness. That is, you got to get your shit together. You have to be able to be a whole person to do that. If your mind is darting all over the place, then you are fragmented by your, your intellect. To be able to be whole, you have to bring your mind in alignment with your body. And when that happens, then something really miraculous happens is that your spirit or Shen awakens. And now we, we're, in, we're using a different part of our brain when we do that. That is, we are in the, we're not using the it mind, that which is the mind that, that thinks about stuff that memorizes stuff that says, what do I do next? That, that's the it mind and it puts things into categories and helps us to remember things. But whenever I am in a state of wholeness, then my body and mind are integrated. And I'm using, as I say, a different part of the brain that I'm not localized in the it mind, the part of the brain that actually is doing all the computations and symbolic logic, but it actually moves to much more of, of what is available to you when it awakens your senses. You know, your, the doors of perception are cleansed. And you get to see, as Blake said, you get to see the world as it is, infinite. And, um, that's when we wake up. We wake up and we move into the present moment. So that's the second component. Coherence is where we, we get the body mind integrated awake and that wholeness that generated awakens the spirit. And then we presence and presence is not just a passive thing. It's not just being in the room. It is a decision to occupy space and time. That is to choose to be where you are uh, while you're doing it. You're, you're here now, 
you saying this place, this time, here I am. And that is um, directly affects your ability to create gin. There is a, a direct correlation between the, your effective power and your ability to do anything and how much you are willing to occupy space and time. How much you're willing to do, as Ram Dass reminded us, be here now. So we, to be able to consciously choose to be in this moment, not thinking about the moment, not telling myself a story about the moment, but actually being in the moment. To that extent, if I'm in a state of wholeness and I am present, then I have two of the three qualities that are needed for meeting. And the third one is the ability to relate or to resonate with something that is not me. Something where I'm able to extend out from this system that I occupy to something that is not me, be it uh, another human, an animal, a tree, a rock, whatever, that meeting is means that I'm able to go into resonance with it. And then cool stuff happens. You can even resonate with insubstantial stuff. Other, you can resonate with with your dead mother, you can resonate, and, and I do. But the you know, that meeting can extend to anything that you can you can create as a an opposition terminal in in that you know, a, a negative pole to your to your positive. Then you're able to meet, and that is an extension from me out. So and, and hence all communication is is it follows that same formula that is goes from me and it's extended across a distance to some something that is not me so this is what where we get to the the active ingredient in gin is the meeting so i have to be able to get into the present moment i have to be feel coherent or in a state of wholeness and i have to be able to extend out to something that is not me and be able to encounter that. And it can be something as substantial as a wall or a boulder, or it can be something as insubstantial as the air or space or even light, thought. So we can we can meet any of these things provided we can create enough of a relationship to that thing to be able to generate that so what we we're talking about last week one way of checking yourself because it's easy to do if you got someone there if rick is there to grab you by the wrist and say okay you know no, that's not Jen. No, that's not it. That's not it. Ah, there you go. You know, and then, and, uh, but if Rick's not there, how do, how do you be able to self correct? How do you, are you able to, to determine that? And one thing that I suggested last week, and, and that is that you just grab yourself and as you're extending outward and you can, if I push out and I'm resisting with my other hand, so we now have a relationship. We have this hand and this hand, and I've decided that they are two different things, even though they're part of my body. They are by my decision. My, yeah, I've, I've created that. So now I'm reaching out, and I can feel the tension in my shoulder. I say, ah, not gin. That's crude muscular force. But if I set up all the conditions I need to, I get coherent, I point my finger, I reach with my elbow, I get my three pillars in, and then I reach out and fill. That is, I encounter the hand that is with my wrist. I reach with my wrist, I encounter that, and I allow myself to merge with the thing that's holding me back. 
And then, oh, suddenly the effortless power that is Jin magically appears. So that meeting is the, the philosopher's stone of this alchemy. It is what makes it work. And without it, you can practice a lifetime and never get there. So uh, do I have any questions or thoughts on this? Uh, anybody? Dennis. Yeah, uh, just a comment. You know, <clears throat> I don't think you really have to go to Chicago to find a master who uh, can show you what Jim feels like. I've noticed in my class, I mean, we do partner work. And when somebody, when you feel gin, when somebody really hits you with a good ward off, it's it's like unresistible energy. It's not like being punched. It's not like being shoved. It's just a force that pushes you away. You know, we have, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a there's this woman in my class, a little old lady in my class. She's five foot tall. She couldn't be more than 80 pounds. And when she's on her game, she can just brush me away like a broom. Beautiful. And, 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 you know, it's, and, and, and I suppose I could, if I really rooted myself and forced, I could prevent it from her, but I would lose something by letting her brush me away and feeling that it's a lesson that I get. Beautiful. Great. So Thank I you. That's good. Yeah. You had something more? Uh, yeah, no, I'm just saying it's something that you feel inside and, and it's, um, and, and, and too bad we can't do partner work in this class because it is it, a lot that that lot that you're missing here. But uh, it's it, it's really when you hit it right. What, what do they say? It's it's just, it's the cotton the, the steel rod wrapped in cotton. Right. You know. So yeah, that's, that's all I got. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay, so that's all pretty clear. Um, good. So let's. Uh, <laughs> we covered a lot there, so I just want to make sure that uh, everybody's got the uh, uh, you know, up to speed. So that, that's good. So the uh, uh, bringing that capacity to meet to your movements is what is required in order to make it new each time you do it that you're encountering this motion as if you're meeting it for the first time. And so if you find, oh yeah, I've done that before. Yeah, yeah, we do that. We do that in class all the time. Then it's a, uh, that's an algorithm. That's, that's just, you know, a set of instructions that your mind has memorized to to do these things and you're playing off of an old memory at that point. And even if you can replicate the motion, you there's no gin there. There's no, no life and there's no presence. So its effectiveness is very limited. Its effectiveness is basically whatever you can create with your muscles, which means we're no longer in the gin category, we're in the Lee category. So let's uh, let's do this uh, exercise, and um, we'll uh, take it a little bit deeper, and we'll uh, stand up, please. Take a moment and give yourself permission to be here. Do just doing just this, nothing else. Bow down to the left and then turn to the right. Step out. First thing we want to do is establish the three pillars. Mm -hmm. 
Point and reach with your index fingers. Feel those. If you have to wiggle your fingers, do that. This is a very quick and easy way to establish your wholeness, your energetic coherence. Feel the balls of your feet. And settle in over that. The weight is distributed throughout the, the foot. Knees are unlocked. You're feeling the center of the, the, your body's mass over the balls of the feet. Even if it's distributed throughout the foot, you want to have the set, it's centered over the body's, the ball of the feet. Reach with the crown of your head and tuck in your chin. Open the jade pillow gate, the base of your skull. And even though you may have done this many times before, do it as if it's for the first time. As if there's something to explore, something to learn from each time you do it. Relax your lower back and allow your, your pelvis to the pelvic bowl to, to level out. That means you're gonna release the lower back and allow your coccyx to drop. When you do that, be sure to check your balls of your feet and make sure that still, you're still there. Because each time we adjust our body, the other things will go out of, out of alignment and you just have to reestablish that. Feel your elbows and reach for those. Arms are slightly rounded. You feel the energy in your hands. We feel it by feeling its effect on the stuff, feeling the increased circulation, the pulsing, tingling, heat. Notice that your mind is in the gap between thoughts. You've entered a superconscious state. Pivot out on your left heel, sink into your left leg and step forward with your right foot. Now we're gonna reestablish three pillars here. Even though the, we're, we've changed the position, we still wanna find that, that three pillars because that is what connects us up to the big chi. So we feel the fingers reach with the crown. Feel the ball primarily of the substantial foot, although you're gonna feel the balls of, of both feet, but you're primarily concerned with your right leg because the right leg, right foot is forward. That's your substantial leg. That's your weight bearing leg. You wanna feel the ball there. And feel through your foot, feel the floor. Elbows. And we're doing this as a meditation. We want to feel the, all the, the components we need to make that happen. So what are we doing? We're establishing coherence or wholeness. And we're also establish, establishing presence because your mind is right here doing this and nothing else. You're not thinking about 
this, you are just doing it. You're participating in the event. So feel the index finger of your right hand. Reach with the elbow. You want to keep those two things there. And come up with your right arm and bend at the wrist. So you're reaching out with the wrist. And bring that back down. This time, point your index finger, reach with your elbow, and bring your forearm up. Only this time, don't bend with the wrist, and just do it very slowly. And notice the different feeling that has when you keep your wrist straight. Down. Point the index finger, reach with the elbow, and reach with the wrist. The wrist bends, you're extending out. And notice the difference there. There's a distinct difference in the quality of the movement. Bring the hand down. <coughs> Point, reach with the elbow, and keep the forearm, keep the wrist straight, bring the forearm up. And this time, intercept that with your other hand and press down on that. And notice what happens when you do that. Notice where you take the energy, feel it, and you'll probably notice that it's moved into your shoulder. Bring that down. Point, elbow, reach with the wrist. And this time you're pressing down and just meet your hand, meet your hand with your wrist and notice the difference in the effect on your arm. If you're reaching with your elbow the and reaching with the wrist, you'll notice that the shoulder is much less involved. And you can push down really hard with your other hand and it's not going anywhere. That's because we've created some gin there. Come up like that, boom. So now we wanna do that and then rotate palm up and reach out. Just feel that. You're reaching forward, reaching with the elbow, reaching with the fingers opening the shoulder, rotate and bring the hand down. Point, elbow, reach this time, keep it straight and intercept that with your other hand and notice that it immediately engages the muscles. You try to, Rotate, it's, it's, it's a struggle. You can, you can actually push down on, on that with your other hand and, and, and really feel it, feel the, the difference in, in your own thing. It, it's better if you have someone to work with because then you can get a, uh, um, you don't have to compartmentalize your own brain. But uh, if, you're not, if you're working solo, this is a great way of, 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 of practicing it. 
you know, you can also do it against a wall or whatever too, or chair, you know, anything that, 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 but the key here is that you want to extend the, the reach. And, and so the, the wrist, notice that it's coming up at point elbow and that you're coming up like this. The arm is very relaxed and you have this soft power. That's where the gin comes in. And then you rotate oh, like that. Come in. And we take it the other direction, finger, elbow, wrist, bend the wrist, coming up and rotate that way. Which if you try to do this muscularly, it's not very effective at all. But if you do it with gin, it actually has a very powerful drilling effect. And rotate and return. And we'll put the uh, step forward with your left foot, and we'll do with that the left hand as well. So point with your index finger, reach with the elbow, reach with the wrist. Reach with the fingers, rotate. This time, point, elbow, keep the forearm straight and pick it up and reach out with the wrist straight and notice the effect that has, how that immediately tightens up your arm, your shoulder. And then if you rotate that, it's, it, muscles are kind of grinding against other muscles. And let's do it and feel the gin, point, elbow, reach with the wrist, bend the wrist, reach with the fingers, and rotate. And feel the difference there. And this time, bring it down. Point, elbow, reach, grab your wrist. Give yourself a little resistance and just keep coming through. Boom. And feel that unstoppable soft power that comes. And so what we've done here is we've created a very simple gin just to be able to see that we can do this with all kinds of movements, not just Tai Chi movements, but anything. It's once we break down the qualities that make it a gin, then it's like, oh, what direction do I want the energy to go? So what do we have here? We got a, ah, oh, this is coming up. It's an expansive energy. And then what we're, oh, we're spiraling out. So there's kind of a drilling effect. That's a cool gin, right? If I want to bring that down, I elbow, wrist and uh, bring that down. Oh, that's a different kind of energy. That's uh, like a rollback energy, a loo energy. It's in and down. They have names for these things, you know, but the, and that's, so we can do the Tai Chi forms and we can, we can, oh, this is a ward off shape. Okay, that's so I can have Pong Jin. I can have that, kind of expansive up and out energy that ties everything together. That's great. And, and if I do this form and I do it correctly as if I'm doing it for the first time with presence and engagement, then I will have Jin in my Tai Chi form. If I'm just going through my motions, da, 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 oh, what am I gonna do tonight? Da, 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 then I got nothing. Right? I'm missing an opportunity to go to the center, go
go to the go to the core. So we're going to take this and take it a step further. And uh, so this time we're going to include the ball ni qua. We're going to coordinate this this motion. It's very simple, Jin. We're going to feel the ball of the right foot set the right knee, right? You feel the point, the index finger, reach with the elbow. When I reach with the elbow, I'm going to spiral down to the right, it's going to release down into my right claw. And as I do that, I reach with that wrist. So the notice of the, the reaching of the wrist is I'm not coming up like that, because then I'm just Put, doing a muscular action with my bicep. I'm actually reaching forward and up. So that's 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 the direction of that. So the energy. So then, oh, I'm opening the shoulder as I do that. I spiral down and then I turn back to center and express the chin. So then I feel the ball set the knee. Spiral down, reach with the elbow, spiral down to the right and draw the hand down. And then back to center. Spiral down. This time I'm going to spiral down to the left. Feel the ball, set the knee, point, reach with the elbow, spiral down to the left. So I'm still loading up my right leg. And I reach with the wrist, reach with the fingers and rotate. And then feel the ball, set the knee, spiral down to the left, rotate, reach down with the elbow, the wrist, and back to center. So we're, what we're doing is we're coordinating the qua with the elbow. So we have this kind of this kind of thing we're coming up. So I've exaggerated for this particular meditation. So you can really get the get the idea of bending with the wrist like that. But it doesn't have to be that severe. You can just it it, it the important thing is that you engage the wrist and that allows you to extend from, from this point. If you don't, if the wrist is straight, then you're, you create a, uh, a muscular tension in your, in your arm, which then blocks the energy and takes you out of the, the gin and puts you back into the, into the Lee. You go back into the force aspect. And we see that, let's say we're, we're doing a, uh, the opening here like this, we feel the balls, you set the knees, elbows, point, and then you're coming up like this, you're reaching with the wrists. And just hold that a moment, just feel into that. You're reaching out and feeling that extension. You want to reach with the elbows so that you're really feeling the shoulder joints opening. And continue reaching with the wrists, fingers are very relaxed, and then reach with the fingers. This is how we get the chin in that opening for, for a young form. It's like, oh, feel the ball, set the knees, reach with the elbows. So you're releasing the qua and you're reaching down with the elbows, bending the wrists a bit, let your hands come down. So the meeting here is, is happening, you know, if we, we think if I'm doing this, I'm meeting my hand as I'm coming up and, and going like that. But let's say I'm not, I don't want to bring my hand to there. 
I'm going to meet the air. I feel the air not as a, uh, an emptiness, but as a viscous fluid, like I'm doing Tai Chi in a pool of jello. I feel I'm meeting the air. When that happens, then I, it takes me immediately out of my ordinary mindset and puts me into a whole different place regarding my a whole different place in my brain. So the meeting, you can practice it by creating resistance and reaching through that. You can also do it, like I say, with a wall. Um, you know, if I'm over here, a door, you know, I can go and say, oh, okay, I, if I reach in there, I reach with my wrist, feel my elbow, reach with my wrist and point my fingers, then I can feel the energy going all the way through my body. It doesn't stop at my shoulder. It goes all the way down through my feet. Okay. If I were to do it the other way, and this is a good way to check, do it with a straight wrist and push against it and notice that it gets, you kick in the hose up here in the shoulder. It gets, uh, so you're effectively weakening your structure. And uh, Scott was asking before about what about, you know, this is great with a lot of different movements where you get this, you can get this wrist action happening. What happens if you're punching? And that's a, that's a real important thing because um, what do we do then? So if we're you know, trying to execute a punch and if I punch straight out, like that, it, it has that same effect in my shoulder. Whereas if I, if I punch and activate the wrist, just a little bit there, the punch is effortless. There's no, there's no drag on from my, my muscles pulling back. If I'm punching straight out, you know, it's, it's coming from the shoulder. If I'm doing like this, then it goes through the shoulder and all the way through the body. You can reach down, you can reach up, and they have different, different energies to them. Your, uh, Marie and I were working on bone tran from, from Xing Yi with that. So if you're, if you're here like this and you're doing a punch just to do straight ahead and then now do it and rotate down so your the energy is going down and notice the different the different energy that that gets created there okay and now do it and reach and then come up and you as if you were to strike with the the uh, bottom two knuckles and just feel that so you know if i were to name it i would say that when it goes down it has more of a metal energy and if we're coming up like that, it'd be more of a wood energy. But uh, I'm sure there are other other ways of thinking about it. But there's a there's what happens is if if I if I'm if I'm punching from from a Xing Yi perspective, let's say if I'm coming in here like this and I'm coming up like this, it has an immediate uprooting effect. There's a lifting effect that comes with that. Whereas this one drives down, boom, the energy goes down and has a metal effect. So that, that's my observation. It may not, be, uh, may not be something that other people have, but that's, that's my, my, uh, my thoughts on that. So let's uh, bring, this, bring this in, take a deep breath and close. Disappear the chi.
Now grab a seat. Let's see if there's any any questions or thoughts on this. Valerie. Um, well, it's very humbling to realize I've been doing this 40 some years and being present, um, realizing, okay, when I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about blah, 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 and then the way Lou pops out. Okay. So then I get the way Lou where it's supposed to be. And then it's like, uh, Okay, reach with the elbow. You forgot your your you left you lost that for a second. So then reach with the elbow. It's 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 not coordinating, but it's just encompassing all of those different aspects. Uh, the aspects is not the word, but all those different parts uh, to make it effective. And once I get it all together, yes, it's very effective. But then, you know, I noticed, okay, the way Lou popped out again. So I got, you know, but that's very exciting at the same time because uh, to me, or for me, that means that yes, I'm being very present because I'm noticing that the way Lou popped out and, you know, noticing, oh, well, then I lost the elbow and, or then I lost the wrist, um, you know, and, and bringing it all together in a nice neat package and then you know I lose it but you know I know I can get it back it's just uh it's great it is great it is great to have all those things to bring bring them together and to be able to feel it uh, and it's also great to lose it because I noticed that I lost it you know and that's that's that kind of sounds weird in a lot of different worlds like <laughs> well you messed up and it's like no I didn't mess up that's a lesson I get to, you know, I'm constantly learning from what I lose that I can bring that back. So it, it's a gain. It's a win-win either way you look at it. So. I'm hey. with you. I'm with you. I, 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 that's fabulous. I, I totally with that. that that's great. Right. Like, I, 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 I don't really want to know it all. <laughs> I want to keep this, this endless discovery you know this adventure of, of discovery yes let, let it keep it coming keep it coming there's you know we uh you know we're so far beyond where we were even just you know a couple of years ago and and uh so oh boy you know <laughs> and uh, uh and it just keeps on going and the more we can discover the more we can get in there and say oh Ooh, what else is possible here? Then we can, we it it is rejuvenating. It's exciting. It it, it keeps it keeps the the game alive. And you know, I was saying before about each moment. So you know, this that's the first time I do it. It's the first time ever it was done. And all I have before is is a picture of me doing it before, a thought or a memory of me having done that before, but that's, that doesn't exist anymore. All that exists is this, the memories are gone, that the memories are, 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 are pictures of something that, that once was, but exists no more. You're going to say something, Valerie? Uh, uh, yeah, it's not now. It's not now. <laughs> it's not now. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and so, yeah, Sharon. Um. For me, it's it's when I'm practicing and keeping. I'll use the word elements uh, together. I I lose um, time. Seems endless. There there is no time when I'm doing it all. Trying when I am doing it all. Nice, nice, yeah. Scott. Yeah, I was. Um... I was really, um, really good. Thank you. Um, yeah, I, it really feels like uh, just big, big uh, changes. Um, I don't know the, you know, I don't want to. I guess advancement, but you know, it's just a, it just there's so much. It, it's feels like I've, I've gotten, gotten a lot more than I had before. 
I can't wait to uh, play with it in my form. Um, mm -hmm. But stop it's... making us do the yucky. Stop making us do it wrong so many times. It's really yucky. <laughs> 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 Richard, <laughs> um, I, um, in the movements that we're doing tonight, it seemed to me that I'm thinking about the a wave going through the inside, and that what we do, and if you don't reach with the elbow, the wave doesn't flow through. If you don't bend the wrist, the wave doesn't flow through. Um, so that's that seems to be coordinating by movement a little bit better. Nice, nice. Dennis. Yeah, um, I, I've gone. I've, I've learned a lot. I've been reviewing the classes from last year, and 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 I've really seen how much how much how, how much I, I progressed. Uh, I was going to comment. I, I noticed when we were doing the testing. I was pushing against the back of a swivel chair. And when I bent my wrist, I could feel the energy down into my foot. I could feel the energy going into the wheels of the chair. And then when I straightened my wrist, I just went into brute force. I actually pushed the chair away. It was like I went from the, the soft power of the insubstantials. I just substantially muscled the chair right out of the way. Right. And you can beat up on that swivel chair anytime you like, but it, uh... It's not going <laughs> to teach you anything. <laughs> right, that's right. <laughs> so yeah, it uh, reminds me of you know. I remember when I was first learning Tai Chi boxing from uh, Master Chen, and I asked him if I should get a heavy bag, and he says, "No, no, practice on a lampshade." And <laughs> <laughs> and and that was the the idea was if you can't control your punches by punching on a, a lampshade then you're not ready for the heavy bag because the heavy bag is just going to take you back into old patterns, you know, brute force. You're trying, ah, I'm going to move this thing. It's like, no, no, punch. You're punching this, this lampshade and, and uh, it, you learn that fine control that you need in order to be able to execute that correctly. Cool. Anybody else? Are you waving, Richard? Richard Stern, I can't hear you. I think you're on mute. Let's see. Yes, on mute. Okay. Okay. There you are. Got me now. Gotcha. Um, got lately, um, I've been watching uh, Professor Chang every day you know, on online just to see what I can get from it. And um, is, is there going to be a, a class where I can ask you a few things about the way he moves uh, physically? Sure, sure. Bring it next week. Next week, okay. Yeah, if you can, uh, if you can send me something before that, that'd be great because I, I may be able to speak more intelligently if I actually see it. Okay. But happy, happy to... Uh, Happy to, to talk about that, yes. Great, thank you. You bet. Okay, everybody, good. All right, thank you all so much. It's been great. Really appreciate it. Love you. Thank you, Rick. Thanks, Maria. Thank you, Thanks, Maria. Uh, thank you, Maria. Thank you Rick. Bye-bye. Thank you, Rick. You're welcome. <laughs>